All right, we'll just get started. I'm sure there'll be one or two more people coming on over the next few minutes, but let's get rolling. Um, so let's continue. We, we've been going through the uh, kind of uh, attitudes of a superstar agents, and we want to continue on that. We're going to continue. There's an agent down in uh, named Yoki. Uh, she actually is down in Naples, Florida, and I have part of her plan on what she did to build her business. So these are all Mike Ferry points. Um, for those of you that don't know, I've been coached by Mike Ferry for the past 20 years, paid him a bunch of money. <laughs> but along the way, just picked up a lot of tools and, uh, and tricks and, and strategies to improve and increase my business. And that's what we share every week on these calls. So uh, the first point we're going to talk about uh, today is customer service. Customer service. Customer service is, is actually, believe it or not, a form of prospecting. Most people don't think of it that way. They think of customer service as just being kind to your customers and, and being good to them. But it really is a form of prospecting because as you share with your customers how good you are at what you do, what do they then, then in turn do? They look for referrals for you. <laughs> they send you their friends. They send you their family. They send you their neighbors. So customer service, when you think of it, is really a form of prospecting. Now, it's just nice to give people great service, but when you think, oh my God, this is gonna actually help make me more money in the future if I give excellent service to people, then it makes it even more fun, even more rewarding. So we do not offer anything tangible other than our service. We're in a service-based business. It's not like we're selling a widget. We're not selling a a, a you know a, a pizza right or a product we're selling service that is that is who we are it's what we do so how good is your service how good is your service how would you rate your customer service let's say on a scale of one to ten think about that for a second what number comes to mind how would you rate your customer service on a scale of one to ten Okay, is it a five, is it a six, is it a seven, is it an eight? So my next question is, what would make it a 10? What would make it a 10? What does customer service mean to you guys? Somebody open their mic and just share what excellent customer service really looks like to you when you're working with your buyers or your sellers. Uh, I'd say it's uh, being ahead of anything that, that possibly comes up, like them never having to reach out to me, basically, <laughs> mm -hmm. because I'm just always on it. Yeah, that's great service. You ever, you ever get a, you know, mean to call a client? I've, I've been meaning to call this client and it's like, then the phone rings and they're calling you. It's like, oh, shoot, <laughs> missed it again. <laughs> It happens to me all the time. And every time that happens, I say, I've got to increase my level of customer service. Yes, being ahead of their expectations, answering questions before they even know they have the questions. Is that great service? How comforting, it, how comforting is it to know that your agent is already a few steps ahead of you and, and it's like they just know the future? Like that's great service. That's great service. I never have to call my agent because... I don't have any questions. They keep me so damn informed, right? Great, great customer service. Next point, market knowledge and expertise. This is, this is one of the key ingredients for a blueprint for success for any agent that wants to really crush it at any level. Market knowledge and expertise. Knowing your market stats, knowing the market trends, that allows you to have a more informed conversation with your client and advise them accordingly. So do you know what's happening in your market? Have you taken any time to study the trends, to study the stats? You know, it's one of the best things we could all be doing to really understand the market, previewing property. Does anybody ever take some time to actually preview property in your area and understand your market? So here in Hermosa and Manhattan, there's broker opens every Friday. In Redondo, it's every Thursday. In PV, it's every Tuesday. 
in if you're in other markets, you have broker opens. Do you actually go on those broker opens? Take the time to understand your market. Do you ever look at your stats in the marketplace? How many listings are for sale? How many are actually selling right now? That tells you how fastly, how fastly, that's a new word, how quickly the, the property is being absorbed. It's the absorption rate. How does that compare to six months or a year from ago? Do we have more listings than we used to? Is days on market climbing? This is really great things that just go back to the last point. They increase your level of customer service. You actually have something of value to share. Next point, prospecting and lead generation. How much time do you spend every day looking for business, generating leads? How much time do you spend? Do you spend an hour a day, two hours a day, three hours a day, zero hours a day, <laughs> right? It actually takes, in, 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 in Yoki's instance, she said, it took me a couple of years to connect the dots between daily prospecting and earning the money I wanted to earn. In other words, when you start prospecting in the beginning, you say, you end up saying, why am I putting myself through this brain damage every day? My gosh, I'm calling people, I'm knocking on doors, I'm talking to my past clients, I'm talking to my center of influence, right? And it's hard, people are hanging up on me, people don't wanna hear from me, I'm bothering them. Have you ever heard of, an, of, of any business in any industry though that doesn't prospect? If you're not doing lead generation every single day, you're going out of business. So what are some different ways that you can do some lead generation, guys? Who's doing lead generation every single day? And what are you doing? Let's hear about it. Sean and Chad, you guys are doing lead gen every day. What are you doing? Uh, door knocking. Yeah. How much door knocking are you doing every day? Uh, three hours a day. Three hours a day. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of door knocking. That's a lot of door knocking. Well done. Chad, same thing, right? Yep, same thing. Ray, you're on the phones. I know you're prospecting. Are you door knocking or are you at the phones? I'm doing phones and open houses. Phones and open houses. Great. Danny, you're prospecting. What are you doing? I am on the phones in the morning, uh, mm -hmm. about three hours. And I, then I'll do generally like two and a half hours of door knocking in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I do. Great. So no one's mentioned so far past client center of influence. That is probably the most effective prospecting method that you could ever, ever do. These people already know you, they trust you, they like you, they want to support you. So door knocking, cold calling, all these things are great, but don't forget your people, right? Your past clients, your center of influence. If you don't have any past clients, it's center of influence. It's friends, it's neighbors, it's family members, it's people that you went to school with, it's people that you do your hobbies with, it's you know, people that you meet when you're out and about. If you have children, it's their friends, parents. There's all these people that need help buying and selling real estate. That is your center of influence. You have to appropriately work that group of people on a regular basis and get business from them. Next point, thinking big. Constantly exposing yourself to people that are doing much more than you do getting yourself involved in an environment where you're exposed to people doing more than you do. If you're not putting yourself in an environment where people are doing more than you do, then you're really just exposed, you know, where you're at is kind of, where you're at is basically a culmination of all your activities and all your exposure over the past six months. 
And if you if there's no new information, no new participation, no new influence, then why would you expect for your business to change over the next six months? We have to constantly be exposing ourselves to participating with people, with things that are more than we're used to. So are you doing that on a regular basis? Are you doing anything to expand your mind that you can do more, have more, be more, accomplish more? Sean, before you joined the team, you were prospecting how much? Um, <laughs> yeah, like one hour, let's see, three hours a week, maybe. <laughs> three hours a week. And you thought you were working. Oh, yeah. You thought you were working. You thought you were working hard. There was no reason for you to believe otherwise. You were working hard as far as you knew until we exposed you to what real estate really could look like, how you could really ramp it up and talk to way more people and use way better scripts and get way better results. That you're capable of, you're capable of so much more than you ever believed you were capable of before, right? That doesn't happen just coming out of you naturally. We're creatures of habit. We're creatures of comfort. It takes exposure to other people doing other things. You never want to be the biggest, smartest, fastest, you know, richest person in the room. You want to put yourself around people that do so much more than you do. Right? That's why we are on these calls every week to participate with each other. That's why we read books exposing us to people that do more than we do, thoughts that we don't have, actions that people take that inspire us. Anybody ever read David Goggins' book? <laughs> it's called You Can't Hurt Me. If you don't know who David Goggins is, look him up. Watch one of his speeches. This guy has brutalized himself. He does ultra marathons, all these crazy endurance things. And you read about what he's done. It gives you permission to do more because now you know it's available. You know that people can do that. Business is no different. If you're doing 10 or 20 or 30 transactions a year, it's really cool to participate with people that do 50 or 75 or 100 transactions a year. If you do 100 transactions a year, it's great to participate with people that do 300 transactions a year. It shows you what's possible. You might say, I didn't even think that was possible before. Are you kidding me? You can, you can make a million dollars in real estate? I didn't even think that was possible. Or more, right? So it's so, participation is so important. So what are some of the ways that you can increase your level of participation? Well, these calls every week are one way, right? Participating with other people. Podcasts are amazing. There's so much stuff on YouTube. Books that you can read, seminars you can attend, events you can go to. Even going to Brokers Open. Go to some five and $10 million broker open houses, right? Get yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit. Talk to these agents. Ask them how they got the listing. The more we participate, the more we get out of our little cave, the more success we're going to have. Just allows us to model ourselves after other people. Next point, keeping a strong mindset. Keeping a strong mindset. Anybody think mindset's important in this business? <laughs> is it just a little bit important or is it very important? 
Mindset is everything, absolutely everything in this business. So I have a question for you. What is your mindset? What is your attitude? What is your approach? What are your expectations? What's your mindset? How do you wake up in the morning? Are you excited about the day? Or, oh man, I don't want to do this. I just want to stay in bed. I don't want to get out. I don't want to prospect. Or is it, I get to prospect. I have an opportunity to go talk to 30, 40, 50 people today and find out who I can help in buying or selling real estate. Like, that's exciting. That's exciting. Who feels like they've had some mindset challenges in the past? And what did you do to get over them? I'm curious to get some participation here because we all have mindset issues, all of us. And we've never kind of arrived at the top of the mountain. It's not like you just conquer it for good, right? Mindset is something that always comes up. We're always working on it. It's a constant work in progress. So who on the call has, remembers a time where they've really had some mindset challenges, where they've really gotten into a rut and then they've done something or something occurred that helped to spur them out of that and have more success? Is that resonating with anyone? Mark, go for it. Thanks. My, uh, I had a recent challenge. Can you hear me okay? So recent challenge was a health challenge. And uh, so um, kind of got to the point where um, I was just like, got to do something about this. So um, I started, um, I started walking and uh, this is recent, just started walking. And uh, I go, so in the mornings I go out walking, I go to the beach and people are exercising in the beach. So it's a kind of community also. I don't know these people, but you see them out there. You see them running, you see them exercising and it's, it is a participation with a community, specific community, early in the morning, out there at 536, people at the beach working out. And so it's a it's a it's a it's been a lot of fun. Okay, great. So your mindset was was improved by raising your level of participation. Moving. Number one, yep. moving. Yeah, physically moving, and then the participation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, great. Okay, great. So let's talk about mindset for another minute. If you feel like, again, let's go back to that rating system. How would you rate your mindset on a scale of one to 10? How would you rate your attitude? Is it positive? Is it negative? Or somewhere in between? How would you rate your approach? How would you rate your expectations? Do you feel that when you wake up in the morning and you're approaching your day that you're going to have a successful day? Or do you feel like, I already know what this is about. I'm not looking forward to it one bit. How is your mindset in relation to your day? Is it a three? Is it an eight? And what would make it a 10? Some, some things that I would share with you to increase and improve your mindset. Read more books. Read more books. Watch some inspirational videos. <laughs> Jump on YouTube. Consider doing some meditation. Consider some exercise. Consider participating in talking to someone that has a stronger mindset than you. These are just, you know, four or five things that you can consider doing if you feel like you need to increase and improve your mindset. But mindset truly is the foundation of having success in this business. If you're not having a good mindset, it is very hard to prospect and lead generate effectively. Rather than saying, when do you plan on moving? You end up saying, you don't plan on moving, do you? It's just that little tweak in mindset changes your approach. When you're showing property to a buyer, you know, having a, a really good, strong, positive, uplifting, um, authentic 
authentically good mindset changes the relationship. Next point. Next point is entitled practice. <laughs> practice. Practicing your skills in this business. Practicing your scripts in this business. Do you guys find that you say the same things again and again and again in most selling situations? When you're at an open house, do you say the same thing pretty much again and again and again? When you're showing a property to a buyer, do you say the same things as you're taking through the house? When you're prospecting for listings, do you use the same script? When you go on a listing presentation, do you pretty much say the same things every time you go on a listing presentation? The truth is we already have our own scripts that we use. Question is, are they good scripts? Are they effective scripts? <laughs> do you know what to say in any selling situation? How about objection handling? You guys ever get objections, right? You're on a listing appointment. We've got a friend in the business. I want you to cut your commission. I want to give you a 30-day listing. Objections don't change. These are the same objections that agents have been getting for 30 or 40 or 50 years or more. Since the dawn of the real estate agent, <laughs> objections haven't changed. Right? I've got a friend in the business. I want to save some money. Whatever it is. Do you know the answers? So back to the point, how much time each day do you spend Practicing. How much time do you spend each day practicing? The scripts that I personally like are the Mike Ferry scripts. So if you're at all interested in those, you just go to mikeferry.com, M-I-K-E-F-E-R-R-Y. Mike has all of his scripts for free. Uh, for those of you that don't know Mike Ferry, he is pretty much the guy that originated the real estate coaching industry 40 years ago. 47 years ago, actually, I think it is. He started in 1975. So there's thousands of real estate coaches. They all pretty much stemmed from his coaching organization. But he has great, simple scripts that you can follow in any selling, selling situation. Listing scripts, buyer scripts, price reduction scripts, objection handling scripts. So once you have the scripts, you practice them. Practice them. Know what to say in any selling situation. Because the same things keep coming up over and over and over again. Really, this business is, gets a little boring after a while because it's so repetitive. Which is a good thing. It's a great thing that it's repetitive because it means the same thing has come up again and again and again. Right? We keep calling on Sean. Sean, you've not you've talked to in the past, you know, six months, two thousand conversations or whatever it was, right? You've been knocking doors three hours a day, every day. Uh, almost three thousand now. <laughs> almost three thousand. You've said the same thing quite a number of times, over and over and over and over and over again. You've gotten a tremendous amount of practice. But with that practice also comes mastery. Right? So practice is so very, very important. Now, I heard this, this is kind of interesting. You know, people say practice makes perfect. Somebody corrected it once and they said, no, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. If you're practicing the wrong things, you're not gonna get better. So Trevor, I can see that you have workout equipment in the back and you've got the charts on the wall, all the muscle groups and everything. So clearly Trevor is somebody that's into exercise and fitness and working out. If you practice the wrong exercises improperly, if, you do, if you're doing the exercise and you're doing it wrong, you have the wrong form, you're not going to get stronger. In fact, you're going to hurt yourself, right? Perfect practice. So same thing with scripts. Right? And we, we talk about that a lot. How to be really effective with what you say. So practice, you know, once you have your scripts. So think about this, guys. What, what 
what area in your business do you feel like you have a loss of power in? When you go on a listing appointment, do you dread them saying, we want you to cut your commission? Like, do you just dread that? Or, you know, um, when, when you're on a listing appointment, if they say, you know what, we, we, uh, why should we list with you? We, we really want to interview two or three other agents. Like, do you know what to say? Is there an aspect of your business that you actually dread, you know, when you're prospecting, if you're calling an expired listing? Ah, I get on the phone, I freeze, I don't know what to say. The truth of the matter is, is that in any selling situation, there, there are words to be able to resolve that. Question is, do you know what to say? And if you know what to say, do you practice it? It's really quite simple. It's just a function of thinking, I have a loss of power in this specific aspect of my business. When somebody says, I want you to cut your commission, I freeze. I don't know what to say. Okay. How about taking some time and writing down two or three or four objection handlers for that and practicing them over and over and over and over and over again. So when someone says something to you, you know exactly what to say and you can just handle it. Think about any aspect of your business where you have that loss of power, where you could use an uplifting of your scripts right? And practice them a lot because you know it's going to come up again. So take your weakest part and, and build it into your strongest part. Build it into your biggest, biggest strength. I can't wait for someone to ask me to cut my commission. God, I just want to, I just want to tell them what I, you know, my, my handling on that. God, please. Well, we are all ready to sign up with you. Well, don't you want to ask me to cut my commissions? No, no, we're happy with the commission. Okay, darn it. Okay, fine. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to be there? That'd be a great position to be in. God, I just want you to tell me, please tell me you have a friend in the business. I love handling that objection. I've got a friend in the business. I hope you have a friend in the business. No, we're on a list with you. Don't you have a friend in the business? Anybody? Weren't you thinking about listing with anybody else? I'd like to handle that objection. <laughs> That's how good you can get. It's just through practice and role play. Honestly, it's that simple. It's that simple. The next point is called keeping your emotions between the lines. In this business, are there highs and are there lows? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes the highs and lows happen within an hour of each other, right? You're prospecting on the phone. You set an appointment. Oh, my God, I set an appointment. 30 minutes later, you find out you have an escrow that's falling apart. Oh, God, like... It's like this business has a funny way of just toying with your emotions. It's a roller coaster ride sometimes, isn't it? Well, Mike Ferry has this thing that he refers to as keeping your emotions between the lines. In other words, don't let them go. There's a line up here and a line down here, and you want to keep it between the lines. Keep it between the lines. The reason is because there's always going to be ups and downs in this business. One of the best ways to keep your emotions between the lines is just do more business, right? If you have 12 escrows currently and one falls apart, not a big deal. It counts for about, what, 8% of the amount of money in escrow? If you have one escrow and it falls apart, that's a big deal, isn't it? So one of the best ways to keep your emotions between the lines is just to do more, to prospect more, to follow up more, to do more deals, to learn to work in multiples. That's one way to keep your emotions between the lines. Now, if you're in a desperation mindset, if you only, if you don't do much lead gen, you got one deal here and one deal there, and that's just always how you operate, you're probably going to be acting out of desperation much of the time. That's not a way to keep your emotions between the lines. When you're in a desperation mindset, it's very hard to be non-emotional. It's almost impossible to be non-emotional. Next point, develop a mindset that you are the solution to a client's problems, not the other way around. That's a really interesting point. This client, they're a solution to my problem. Or 
I'm a solution to their problems. I'm going to go out and serve people. Let me see how many people I can be a solution for today. Rather than, what can you do for me? I'm going to go door knocking to find somebody so I can get a commission check. When you show up with that kind of attitude, that kind of mindset, people see it. They feel it. They smell it. It's called commission breath, right? They can smell that commission breath on you. All you want is a commission, dude. Get, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to deal with you. Rather than you're the solution to my problem, right? I need you to buy this house. Don't you want to sell your house? Now's a great time to sell. Prices are high. It's like, no, dude, I don't need to sell my house. Please, don't you want to consider putting it on the market? It's like, listen, dude, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Rather than I'm a solution to your problem. Tell me about what you're trying to accomplish. How can I help? How can I serve? What questions can I answer? What can I do to assist you in this process? I want to be your resource. How can I be of service? How can I be your resource, right? Develop a mindset that I am the solution for the client's problems, not the other way around. Great, great point. Go through a couple of more. Anybody hear the, um, the term KISS? Keep it simple, stupid, right? <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. This business is actually quite simple, right? In talking about having a successful real estate business. Is it really that complicated or is it simple? In other words, the more we complicate our business, do we make more money? Usually the simpler we keep it. What is this business? Number one, we've got to talk to people, right? We've got to do lead generation. We've got to call people. We've got to door knock people. We've got to find them on social media if that's your thing. Whether they're an expired listing or for sale by owner or a cold call, a past client, a friend, a family member, somebody in the neighborhood, somebody that you give business to like an attorney or an accountant or your dry cleaner or a restaurant you go to or your kids, friends, parents, whatever it is. There's talking to people. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to talk to people. They will either be a lead or they will not be a lead. Then I'm going to follow up with those people, right? I'm going to do some follow up. Then I'm going to set an appointment after I followed up when they're ready. I will set an appointment. And then that will help them either buy a home or sell a home. I mean, that's pretty simple. It's like a four-step process. Prospect, lead follow-up, set an appointment, and help them negotiate a contract, buying or selling a home. It's four simple steps. Keep it simple. The more you try and come up with magic solutions, processes that are, you know, are there a hundred different people that are trying to sell you the latest and greatest methodology for finding listings, <laughs> right? Are there magic bullets and magic formulas and things that, that are guaranteed to work right after you pay $995 a month or something like that? Keep it simple. Talk to people. Talk to a lot of people. It doesn't matter who you talk to, quite honestly. Now, talking to your past client or to your center of influence, a friend, a family member, a neighbor, is way more effective than talking to a stranger, right? There's two groups of people in the world, the people that you know and the people that you don't know. The people that you know, it's a smaller group of people, but they're a su more supportive group of people. They're a group of people that really wants you to develop a strong business. They want to give you referrals, but it's a limited group. You run out of those, that group of people at some point, and then you have to learn to talk to people you don't know. But it's pretty simple. You've got to talk to people. So don't complicate it. Let me just spend my time making the ultimate website. It's going to be great. It's going to have my, my picture on it up on the left, and there's going to be like this sun shining on me, and I'm going to look like I'm glowing, and there's going to be like houses in the background and fancy. What? Forget that. You don't need a fancy website. 
You got a basic website, fine. No, 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 my business card, it's gonna be super cool. Um, it's gonna be made um, out of, um, you know, it's gonna be shiny and black and really thick cardstock. And on the back, it's gonna have this like thing. Like, like, what? No, you don't need a fancy business card. You need to talk to people, <laughs> right? Keep it simple. This is a very simple business. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it. No, no, I need to make this fancy brochure. Once I have my, my brochure, uh, then I'll be able to blanket the neighborhood and people are going to all of a sudden just call and list with me. Nope. None of that stuff. Keep it simple. Follow the plan. Like I said, P is for prospecting. L is for lead follow-up. A is for appointments, go on appointments, and N is for negotiate contracts. You follow that plan every single day and your business will grow. In fact, try and spend three quarters of your day following that plan. Those are called income producing activities. P is for prospect, L is for lead follow-up, a is for appointments, and is for negotiating contracts. Those are the highest and most productive activities that you could ever do. Spend 75 to 80% of your day following the plan. Well, what if you don't have any contracts to negotiate? What if you don't have any appointments to go on, the A and the N? Just spend three quarters of your day following the P and the L prospect and lead follow-up. Gosh, I don't want to spend all that time prospecting. <laughs> That's a different issue. Then you simply have to ask yourself two questions. These are good to write down. How badly do I want it? Question number one, how badly do I want it? Number two, what price am I willing to pay to get it? Sometimes it really comes down to that. How badly do I want it? And what price am I willing to pay to get it? Am I willing to deal with the first couple of years of just like really pushing? I'm going to just talk to people. I don't care. Yes, I have a fear of talking to people. Yes, it's sometimes frustrating because they hang up. Yes, it's annoying. Um, yes, it can be terrifying or depressing or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. How badly do I want it though? And what price am I willing to pay? Am I willing to spend an hour or two or three talking to people? Am I willing to call all of my past clients? Am I willing to call all of my center of influence? That's uncomfortable. I don't want to, hmm, my neighbor, I think he knows I'm in real estate, but I don't really feel comfortable like talking to him and saying, you know, I'm in real estate and who do you know that needs help buying or selling? You know what? Get over it. How badly do I want it? No, I want this bad. I'm going to just talk to my damn neighbor. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> How you doing? You know what? I don't know if I ever told you. I'm in real estate. Did you know that? Yeah, well, I am. I wanted to just ask a favor of you. Would you mind keeping your eyes and ears open for anybody that needs assistance buying or selling real estate? I have a personal goal to help two families this month buy or sell a home. And I wanted to ask you for your help in helping me to achieve that goal. Would you do that for me? You would? Thank you, dude. I appreciate you. You're the best neighbor ever. <laughs> like, thank you, thank you, thank you. What about you? Is there any assistance you need? Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you thinking about it. I want you to know something. I want to be an incredible resource for you when it comes to real estate. If there's anything you ever need, I want you to know, you can always reach out to me. Something big, something little, questions, you let me know. I'll be your resource for real estate. Fair enough? Great, man. Good to talk to you. How badly do you want it? What price are you willing to pay to get it? Many times, everything we want in our life is just outside our comfort zone. Is it uncomfortable to do these things? Of course it is. But is it worth it? Of course it is. And guess what? If you constantly are doing things that are outside your comfort zone, in other words, if you're very comfortable being uncomfortable, if you enjoy being uncomfortable, if you start to have these really good thoughts about, 
a different association with being uncomfortable. You know what? If I'm uncomfortable, if I've got those butterflies in my stomach, if I'm feeling like, oh, God, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it, that means you're growing. That means you're improving. We don't want to be fat and happy all the time. This is not just about being comfortable, sitting back on the couch, watching. Yeah, well, let me just get, grab some popcorn and watch Netflix. That's comfortable. But if I want to grow, if I want to do something bold, sometimes it takes a little uncomfortability. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. What are some things that you guys can think of that are super uncomfortable that you don't want to do that you know will help your business? Who do you have to call? Who do you have to get in touch with or reconnect with that potentially would, would give you real estate referrals? What makes you uncomfortable in this business? Everything you want is just outside your comfort zone. Another way of saying that is everything you want in life is just on the other side of fear. We all have fears. Very, very natural. I do, you do. It's just a part of life. So uh, the last thing I'll mention for today's call is if you do have fears and you truly would want to get over these fears, if you feel like fear is the one thing that's stopping you from growth in this business or in any aspect of your life, there's a wonderful book by Susan Jeffers, J-E-F-F-E-R-S, called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Great, great, great book. I, I need to reread it. It was so good, but I read it years ago. All right, let's, uh, let's stop there for, for this week's call. Um, let's quickly just open up the mics. Uh, is anybody having any challenges in their business, whether it's a business challenge, a mindset challenge, a script challenge, a scheduling challenge, a time blocking challenge, a mindset challenge, anything at all? If you are having a challenge, chances are there's probably 40% or 50% of the agents on the call right now that are having the same challenge. So it would be helpful to anybody on the call if you're having a challenge to bring it up. Let's deal with it together. And if not, good. Keep on the right track. Anything anyone's going through that you want to bring up real quick that we can deal with? All right. Well, good stuff. All right, let's wrap it up then today. Guys, thank you so, guys and gals, thank you everybody for your participation and for being here and for taking some time out of your busy schedules. We will be here same time next week and continuing to participate at a high level and assisting you in doing whatever it takes to grow your real estate business. All right, go crush it this week, guys. Have a good one. Take good care. Bye.